Hey folks, I've got a great episode of the Texas Titans podcast for you today. I'm your host, Jason Wright, and thanks so much for checking out the show. All right, so one day I'm scrolling through Instagram looking for health and wellness tips, and I find this guy who's doing little videos uh, to music, and he's just shredded. And so, and he's got some great tips below his videos. So I start looking at these, and then I'm like, who is this guy? He's in Austin. He's in Texas. Why have I never heard of him? I did more research, and I found out that this guy's pretty special. He's an entrepreneur. He's a Marine. And he's someone who's gone through some incredible life changes to get to the health and wellness state that he currently is in. And so the more I learned about Eric Champ, the more I wanted to know. So I reached out, and I asked him to come on to the Texas Titans podcast. Now, here's the thing. Five years ago, Eric Champ, was not a personal trainer. He wasn't a nutrition guy. He was selling elevators and through some career changes decide. And by the way, he was an overweight, very successful elevator sales guy. I mean, he was, he loved his job making good money. We talk about that in the podcast, but as so many traveling globetrotters do, they kind of lose sight of the waistband and all of a sudden he's putting on a pair of pants and they're just too tight. But what he realized was it wasn't just about him being overweight, that his life had kind of taken a change that he didn't feel as in control of. And so he wanted to make some serious, serious changes. And that is when his health and wellness journey began. Well, that transformation personally turned into him deciding to open up his own personal fitness business. So he customizes a trailer that's awesome. I'm, I'm jealous of this trailer and starts doing personal training in Austin, Texas. That's all well and good until a global pandemic hits. And so before he could even really get his trailer going, he was building clients, he was doing well, but before he could really blow up, everything comes to a standstill. He can't go out and train his clients. So what does he do? Well, this is crazy, and this is why I love this story, and this is why I now love Eric Champ and his attitude and his and the way he perseveres. So a global pandemic hits, and instead of just – not only having his, not being able to serve his Austin, Texas personal uh, training clients, he takes his training business global through Instagram. At the time I found Eric, he had 166,000 followers. He's already got some great affiliate deals with some of the biggest names in fitness. Well, now as of today, he has, I'm looking at it right now, 174 thousand followers from all over the world. He is training people virtually all over the world. So you've got a guy who starts a new business, a business, by the way, that he had not never done before as a part of changing his life. That business could have been shut down before it really got going. And instead, he scales it up to a global level. And when you listen to this conversation and when you get to know Eric Champ, you realize why. He's all about positivity. He's all about paying it forward. He's about holistic, taking your, your mind, your body, the whole thing, kind of like my Vitruvian idea. You know, it's being, you know, improving all ways in all ways to try to find that perfect proportion. Well, Eric Champ, and I've already, I've already told him after this, I want him to be the first uh, guest on what will be uh, an upcoming uh, podcast that I'm developing called the Vitruvian Podcast. And he fits the mold of exactly the type of guests that I want to bring on that too. But well, on this episode though, Eric Champ is minted a Texas Titan. And I think you will find by listening to this conversation that it is very well deserved. And if you're on Instagram, I highly encourage you to go to Champ City ATX. That's Champ City ATX. Follow Eric. Here's the deal. Even if you don't become a personal training client of his, he puts out such great content. And I'm look, I scrutinize. I mean, there are plenty of guys out there with their shirts off doing fitness things that, you know, are just kind of douchey. That is not Eric Champ. He takes it seriously. He's worth a look. So check out Champ City ATX and enjoy this conversation with my friend Eric Champ. Thanks for listening, folks. It's season three of the Texas Titans podcast, and you're here. That's awesome. Thank you. Share this. I'm out. All right, Eric Champ, I just hit record, so congratulations, brother. You are now officially minted a Texas Titan. How does it feel? Well, I'm a Jaguars fan, so 
I don't know, man, but, I, but I'm glad to be here first and foremost. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. In fact, this is actually my first podcast uh, that I've ever joined. So really? This, this is the inaugural one. So I appreciate you having me on. So Well, I'm honored. And let me tell you something. You're on to something. And I know that this will be one of many for you because here's how I found you. We're going to dive right into this, Eric, is so I'm into health and wellness. I'm into fitness. I'm into entrepreneurship. I mean, these are like all my passions and I find you and you kind of wrap it all into one human being. I mean, you really, and you know, I started following uh, your content on Instagram, your workouts. Then I, then I learned about the business that you have and what you've kind of done with that. And I just, I, I was kind of taken by your story. I was like, I have to meet this guy. And that's the cool thing about having a podcast is that it gives you a great excuse to meet people that you respect and admire and you want to learn more about. So that's why you're here, my man. So I'm ready to dive into this. Awesome. Me too. Okay. So first of all, let's start with how the, how your life transformation came about, because here's what I know, and I want you to fill in the blanks. It appears to me that at some point you decided to make some very big decisions about your health, your wellness, your fitness. I want to know what that journey was like and kind of what that shift was that mind shift that caused you to go to make some drastic changes and by the way for anybody that's listening you've got to go out to uh to eric's social media and you will find that there's there's one thing for a before and after but dude at least physically and i and maybe there i want to hear it kind of you know what's between the ears too but physically brother there's no way you would recognize you it's really remarkable so kind of what was that aha moment when was the transformation and then let's talk about how you turn that life transformation into a business and so go back as far as you want to to lead up to that point and kind of give us kind of start peeling back that onion yeah a lot of people don't know that i was in the, in the, in the marines 21 years ago when I stepped on the yellow footprints in, in Paris Island and, you know, we, we were in of course, pretty, pretty decent shape then. Right. And I left, went into college and, and during college, they have this thing, you know, it's like a, like a summer program where you go to officer candidate school throughout the summers to be an officer when you graduate. Right. And I was doing that and I was in, um, in between my junior and senior year at the University of Central Florida, at the last summer session for officer candidate school, and I just couldn't train anymore. I had stress fractures in all my metatarsals, and that is not that is not good if you're a Marine Corps officer or any kind of trainer for that matter. If you're just trying to have any kind of physical life, so I, it took me, you know, I'd wake up. And it would be like an hour before circulation would even start flowing through my body. So it wasn't working. And so I actually had to leave the Marines fairly sudden. And, and then I got into the corporate world and I worked for an elevator company, several of them. I, I started at ThyssenKrupp and then I was recruited by Otis Elevator Company. And then I went back to ThyssenKrupp because one of the guys who I knew from my first job was like, I want you to come work for me. And the jobs kept getting more and more responsibility. And the last job that I had, I was actually manufacturing, um, I represented manufacturing for ThyssenKrupp, traveling up and down from Canada to Miami, all over the United States. Every week I was on the road. And it was a pretty sexy job. I liked it. It was a small team of us, but it was, it was a grind of all grinds. And if I wasn't married or just didn't have a baby, uh, that probably would have been ideal or everyone's out of the house and I'm just kind of cruising, you know, in twilight time, it was a grind. And because the job was so great and I loved it, I loved mentoring people. I loved working with branches. I love seeing people have success. You know, I want them to have success so bad. And all of a sudden, I, I was I was on a connecting flight heading home, coming through Baltimore. I got a call from HR and the boss who hired me, saying, "Hey, we got to let you go." <laughs> and just out of the blue, uh, while they caught me in in a connecting flight, it was on a Friday heading heading home. And so I was like, "All right, 
you know, okay, so I was a little shook up and that was a high paying job. And I had offers right away coming through, you know, hey, come work for here, other elevator companies, other places. And I just decided to, you know what, this was like an April time frame. I decided to just take a little time off. And, you know, I was, it was meant to be just the summer, just taking the time off. And, um, and then I realized something. Rewinding back the clocks about three months prior to being letting go, I was home and this is, this is where that kind of aha moment came from. And, you know, as I traveled, I always had nice, nice slacks, right? Um, but I wanted them to be comfortable on the planes. And so I, my, my pants kept getting, you know, they started out at 32 a long time ago, then a 34 and then a 36. And then I got 38s. And these were, you know, $200 pairs of slacks with, with hems. And I'm one day, Jason, I'm, I'm, I'm in my closet trying on my new 38 pants, get packing up for one of the work trips with Tiss and Krupp. I'm put, putting them on, and, and I just had these pants for probably two or three months. I'm putting them on and they're too tight there I'm, I'm now ready to go to a 40 yep. and I, I never looked in the mirror hardly ever for physical but more importantly mental reasons I was afraid of myself mm. a lot of things had happened probably even before I even left for the Marines for the last 25 years of my life abusing my body mentally physically spiritually mm. it, I was in a really bad place that I never, ever, ever wanted to admit to myself. And I'm trying on these pants and I caught myself in the mirror and I, I, I look at myself and, and it was just like, I was, I was glued. That moment could have been two hours. It could have been two minutes. It could have been two seconds. You know, the waterworks were coming down, realizing that something is really wrong with my life at this point. Um, and that was it. That, 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 that was the moment. I ha put on a pair of shorts the next day. I was, I was in the YMCA walking a mile on the treadmill. And I went back to that building for a year and a half, nearly every day. As soon as as soon as the time was done with Tiss and Krupp, which was three months after that moment, I never looked back. Right. And, and that was it, you know, so when I came home, instead of getting another job, I was just like, I'm just going to focus on getting healthy. And that summer turned into the winter, turned into the spring, turned into the next summer. And I just kept getting healthier and healthier and healthier. And we needed someone to watch our little girl as it is, instead of trying to figure out babysitters and all that. And so I just became stay at home dad. And through that transformation, um, when I got to my lineage, I was almost 260 pounds, got down to about 189 pounds. And when I got to that leanest moment about a year and a half into the journey, mm -hmm was was when I decided that I need to pay this forward because I was 37 years old at the time started when I was 30 36 it was just about to turn 38 and I was like okay there are other dads out there I was thinking about military veterans who had because you always think like you're going to be invincible and in shape forever back in the right. military why I even mentioned it you never ever think that you're just all of a sudden not going to be out of shape right so I was like there's dads out there there's there's military people out there there's all kinds of people out there I want to help them out. And uh, that's, that's, that's where the mobile gym was born. So, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if you had any follow up questions to that, but I, I'll just go right into this mobile gym if you want me to. Well, I definitely yeah. want to get there, but real quick, because I want you to treat me like I'm one of your clients, because here's the thing, Eric, as you know, and so like we talked about offline uh, yesterday, one of the hard, it's, it's kind of funny. And again, there's just, 
I knew there would be a lot of reasons to want to visit with you. And one of those is you. So I do performance coaching and mostly it's business related. But one of the first things I always do is I start to assess my clients, physical attributes, not what they look like or whatever, but you can tell a lot by a person's health and what you have figured out. And now, you know, have I mean, to a form to, to the point where it's now an entrepreneurial venture, you realize that get your real, your true wealth is in your health. And when you get that right, you can perform everywhere better. What was it besides the fact, like Nietzsche said, you know, it, he who has a big enough why can overcome almost any how you did that. You didn't want to go up another pant size. You realized something's out of order. But so many, I guarantee of your clients that you've seen, they, 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 they're not able to hang on to that why and remember. So if I'm your client in this audience listening, if they are in your situation, which I love your motto, it's never too late because it's not. The only difference is. If you wait four years from now, you're going to be four years older, but it's, it's you, where you are, where you go, there you are. Right. That's so it. how do you get your clients to buy into not only the importance of their physical fitness, but then maintaining the sustainability of it like you yeah. have, which again, that's what drew me to you. Your transformation was nothing short of remarkable, man. And now the way you've maintained it, it's, it's, it's awesome. So how do you, uh, I'm one of your clients who just came to you. I've got a 38 inch waist. I realize I've got, I've got to get this together. Talk, talk me through it. And how, how are you going to help me get to where I want to go? Yeah. Well, my set, you know, yeah, my first, my motto first favorite saying is that it's never too late. Mm -hmm. My second favorite one is motivation is overrated. Yep. Because, because you know, the, the goal with myself, with any client, no matter what their goals are, is we got to find a way to optimize their environment and their process, right? That's it. And if we can get meaning, for example, if you were a client and you're saying, Eric, I'm, I'm ready to get ripping, you know, we would go through this lengthy questionnaire. I get to know you and all this, but then one of the questions in there is what, equipment do you have access to you know you could say all i got is my body i'd be like okay you know and then we would talk about that but then you would say i got access to dumbbells pull apart you know whatever or i don't have access to any of this or whatever it is right and so in our initial consultation part of the environment if all you have is your body weight we would try to create somewhere if all you're going to be doing is working out at your house we got to create an environment to where that particular room or that particular part of the outside or something is going to be just Jason Wright's like place to just get out there and get after it. Right. And there's emotional triggers that we have to attach to that, right? Cues that's going to push you to that in that environment, right? So we got to, we have to place you in there. You know, the idea is to, uh, you know, get, you know, limit, give yourself the best chance to succeed by limiting your chances to fail. Right. Okay. So we have to optimize your environment the best you possibly can. Right. Yep. Then we go into the process and that's, you know, really where I come in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lay out to the letter a through Z exactly what you're going to do seven days a week with the exception of food. Now this is just me personally. Um, uh, I don't create meal plans. Uh, right. I don't. I don't believe they work for long-term sustainable wellness. What I do create is is your caloric macro structure, right? How what, what kind of calories I think you should be at? What your macronutrients should be at? Proteins, carbs, and fats, right? Optimize. I'll give you some some really good ideas and recommendations on, on when you should eat. Um, you know, ideas on intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. all of that, right? Yep. I give you all the tools to succeed in the structure of nutrition, but I still want you to enjoy all the foods that you love, right? I'll, I'll give you, I, I provide cheat sheets of, Hey, here are all my favorite proteins, favorite carbohydrates, favorite fats. These are grocery list items. Like all of this information is right at your fingertips, right? Choose from that. Plus the foods that you love and let's fit it in this structure, right? No one bats a thousand right away. No one hits a home run right away. And it might take someone a week, a week and a half before they get their current nutritional intake dialed in perfectly to where, you know, it fits their caloric structure. Right, but I right. want them to learn that process. I want them to build 
a positive relationship with real food right. and that's it. So we're eliminating as much processed food as possible. So that's the nutrition structure that I provide seven days a week of uh, the workouts, active recovery, if they're going to do any zone two cardio to enhance the whole process, mm -hmm. et cetera, all within an easy to use application. It's, it's, I mean, everything is dialed up perfectly. So that's their process, right? All you gotta do is just follow it yep. and that's it. So if we optimize their environment, give them the process to succeed and I hold them accountable and I'm, there's a touch point with me to you nearly every single day and all kinds of, you know, emotional cues to keep them locked in throughout the week. Hey, I'm giving them the best possible chance to succeed and progress breeds progress. And so if they just follow the plan a little bit, they'll, they'll start to see progress and they'll start to feel better about themselves. And if that motivation is, is growing from within, yep. then it's game over. Yeah. Then they, they are, they're going to be, they're going to succeed um, nearly every single time. Right. Absolutely. So. Well, and I, I noticed uh, throughout that conversation, I hear a lot of atomic habits, you know, we have sure. you know, James Clear's philosophy. Absolutely. And, you know, the power of habit and those sorts of things, setting yourself up for success. Yeah. And so that to me is, yeah. is key. And then what you're saying is, is also, and this is why, man, at some point I got to get you back on so we can like dive into the, the neurochemistry that's involved, all these things, the, the habit forming, because yeah. you dialed that in. And that's why I wanted to bring that out because I want these listeners to understand this is a, there is a deep conversation to be had that most people aren't, they don't go there. They don't dig into their brain and understand how, you know, epinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, all these things play a part, really not just in thinking clearly, right. But getting right. you to sustain and to, and to yeah. really have those, those personal victories to develop the habits. Cause because yeah. you know, once you get that dopamine hit from achievement, you'll keep coming back. You'll keep calling Eric and say, Hey, let's turn it up a notch. Let's keep doing this. Yeah. So, so, right. but now let's go to the trailer. Let's talk about yeah. How this became a business, because now this is the part, you know, I talked to a lot of entrepreneurs and one of the things I want to dig into here, you know, uh, a lot of people, and this comes up over and over on the Texas Titans podcast with successful entrepreneurs, you know, there's a big difference between thinking you want to be an entrepreneur and actually being one. Once you show up and go, oh, you mean I got to figure out how to pay, you know, make this capital expenditure of that, that trailer. I can't imagine how much you've invested in that and then figure out how am I going to get clients Take us through that journey. What's what has that been like? Yeah, well, it's, there's there's an awesome twist right in the middle of it too. So, you know, go through this whole transformation. All right, I'm gonna pay it forward. I don't want to own a gym quite yet. I don't want to go work in a gym because I'm really enjoying, you know, having the freedom to to watch our little one, be a dad. Have, you know, so I'm like, how can I do all of this and succeed? So it's like gosh, I'm going to bring the gym to someone's house, right? Everyone's had this idea at one point or the other, but I was like, okay, I'm actually going to do this. So I got this custom trailer made. Awesome, right? You can see it's always in my Instagram in the background, almost like a tease. Oh, I, I, I'm so freaking jealous of your trailer, I, dude. I, I rarely, rarely ever show it, but it's awesome. And in fact, I'm working on a prototype with a company who helped me make that on number two, and it's going to be even way more awesome. So got this trailer, put it on Instagram, then I'm taking on clients and I was getting clients. I had it for uh, four months, lots of clients going to their houses, businesses, parks. It was booming. It was a little bit, it was taxing, right? I'm driving this thing around, you know, this truck and, you know, luckily, you know, but I'm, I'm still 30. I'm, I'm knocking on the door at 38 now. Right. And it's a little tough, but it's going really well. And I was like, okay, if I can continue to build this, I can scale this trailer business and have younger people drive these things around or mm -hmm. however, right? There's a plan for that. But then COVID came and Governor Abbott's like, you know, with the rest of the country is like, oh, we're, we're, we're shutting down, you know? And I, I may have been able to, I was at a crossroads at this time, Jason. I may have been able to find a loophole because this is not really a gym, you know, probably could have still taken this thing around, but am I gonna go to these people's houses and businesses and then maybe bring some of this stuff back into my house yeah. probably not the best idea right so when everything really shut down and that you know it was like what third week of march i parked it in my driveway and it sat there 
and it's been there for it hasn't moved yet so what, what i did was well damn you know i just spent all this money on this trailer had all these clients going and it was like what two weeks you know stop the spread right yep, thinking yep. maybe i'm gonna get going on this thing right the first week i was like i'm gonna use this time to to relax a little bit let my body recuperate because like i was saying it was kind of taxing driving this thing all around the city yep and then it got into the second week and and the client started to call you know eric are, are you going to be opening back up here pretty soon i was like i'm not sure I'm, I'm just following some guidelines right now i want to but i'm just not sure and it got into the third week and then the fourth week and at that point i was like what well, you know you know, what am I, what am I going to do right now? This is like, I, I'm not sure if gyms are ever going to open back up. So that's when I doubled down on, on Instagram. Yeah. Started doing more home workout videos nearly every single day. Mm -hmm. And all the while, even when I started with the mobile gym, people have been reaching out to me. Hey, do you have an online program? I was like, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't even know where to actually begin. Right. Yeah. And the, uh, I finally found some software. I got one client and it was like a Jerry Maguire moment. I mean, it was like just him and I, and yeah. I gave everything that I had nearly like all day, every day. Right. And, you know, I, looking back, his program was like kind of, kind of crappy by my standards now. And I'll probably say the same thing a year from now about what I'm doing right now. Yeah. As all entrepreneurs, maybe, maybe should. Yep. yep. And, but my gosh, it was awesome. He got what he needed. He wrote an awesome review to my Google page and I got another client and then I got another client and another client. Now I'm coaching folks all over the world. Um, we're having success all over the world and it's not just physical. It's, it's through the power of habits. It's mental, it's spiritual, you know, folks are gravitating to my own journey. And they want to, they also want to escape from that. They just don't want to get fit. They, they want to feel the clarity and understand right. like what it truly feels to be like an optimized human being when right. all things are clicking. Yep. And so yep. we're doing that. And I haven't touched the mobile gym minus it's my own gym. It's what I used to work out with at the house. If it's raining or snowing, I'm still out there doing it. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, uh, and I've, and I've just focused on online and, and, hiring other trainers that's in phase two that's about to launch like it's it's imminent right to yep. have other programs with other trainers under the champ city umbrella yep. and and then phase three is actually bringing in deeper wellness experts yep physicians yep dietitians mm -hmm. other folks to continue to expand the umbrella to you know to where it's truly a one-stop shop holistic practice yeah. Wh yeah. whatever you need we're going to be right here for you Man, I, I love that story. And the thing is, Eric, that's so cool about it, like with so many other entrepreneurs and, you know, like my wife and I, we have a brick and mortar retail store here in, um, in Tyler. And when COVID hit, it was kind of the same thing. It's either sink or swim. It's either you, you adjust, you pivot or you die. And so for a lot of us that are entrepreneurs, it's, it was like kind of a looking back on, it, it's one of the greatest things that ever happened because it forces you to be creative. And I admire one of the things, you know, that you said through that whole process was you, you thought about it and you decide, well, I'm going to do this. And, and so much of it, that's, that's it. It's just making that decision. Right. And just yeah. going through with it. Uh, and then oh. also, you know, so I've told you about this, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and make the ask right here in front of, you know, we, we average about 10,000, you know, as far as listeners. So I'm going to ask in front of everybody right now, I told you, I've got this Vitruvian project that I'm working on, which is exactly what you just described. It's about perfect proportion. It's emotional wellness. It's, it's mental wellness. It's physical yeah. wellness. Nutri it's the whole package. And so I want you to be the first guest on the Vitruvian project podcast because that that will be that's my that's my next venture man and so yeah. I, I would love to uh to dive into some of those things that are exactly what you're talking about so here's another thing i want to talk about while i've got you and i know we're running we're, I, I want to really respect the time but for you personally now you're an entrepreneur you've made it through covid what are you doing to feed your mind you know what are you reading 
what uh, mindfulness, you know, kind of what are those things that you're doing to make sure that what's between the ears stays healthy so that you can keep the, the rest of it going? Yeah. So one of the greatest habits that I formed during this transformation process is every morning when I wake up, first thing I do, I grab my water, I go downstairs, I walk outside, you know, in Austin, the weather's generally nice, except for our snow that we just had. All right. I stick my feet into the ground, I earth, right? And I'm feeling the ground. I get, we got some chairs sitting right in front of our ivy. And I'm just saying, this is probably 5.15 in the morning, usually every single day. If you're if you're up at 5.15 Central Time, know that Eric Champ is sitting outside with his toes in the ground, earthing right now. I like that. And I'm thinking about, I'm doing some light meditation. I'm setting my intentions for the day. Every single morning, Saturday, Sunday, doesn't matter what the day is while I'm earthing. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going through my day looking for where, you know, potential pain points or where, especially when I was in, in fat loss mode, where am I most at risk to make a bad decision, right? So I'm going through that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to be five hours, five hours outside of town. The closest thing to eat is McDonald's. You know, I, if I'm starving at that point, it is 100% guarantee I'm going to that McDonald's. So I have to set myself up for success and make sure I'm bringing all kinds of food with me that I can get past that. Right. So those are the things that I'm thinking in the morning, 10, 15 minutes. And then I do that. And, and then I go to check my phone and, you know, uh, you know, see what, see what's coming through at that point. What, I, what I've done there is give myself, just like we talked about in Clear's book, I'm giving myself the best chance to succeed on my agenda yeah. and not allowing the day to consume me right off the bat. Yeah. And when I started changing into that mindset, Jason, that's it. it things, things really got interesting for, for me there. That's when things really started to be optimized. That's when I actually probably started to see the most accelerated success with my own business yeah. because before waking up social media, but even worse, you know, if any kind of issues with work was coming through, so I, I, that's it. It's over, you know, so I'm a morning workout person. Same here. So after that, that's when I go to my workout. And um, if I'm waking up and checking my work email and getting, you know, flustered right away and not allowing myself to, to do what I need to do, there's a good chance I might miss it. Right. So every morning I wake up, I set intentions outside. Just talked about this last night with, um, did a live with, with Dr. Vincent Pedre. I call uh, some of that. Yeah. He incredible. All, all about the gut microbiome and, and gosh, we could spend a whole hour. I'm not an expert like he is. Uh, but that's, that's honestly where the true power is. And that's what we, what we, you know, coach about, you know, in our, uh, in our coaching business, getting away from processed foods, but, but that's what I'm doing. You know, so I'm, I'm setting intentions. That's how I try to keep clear within the mind all the time. Well, I love that. And yeah, that's, I've started reading a lot of uh, uh, Stephen Gundry's work, you know, and the plant paradox. And then, yeah. so, so, so next time I have you on, man, we're going to dive into some of the, the we're going to get into the weeds. And I will say, you know, ditto on the morning routine to everyone that's listening to this podcast. You know, I did a video about my, I have an extensive morning routine that starts with an ice shower and that your earthing yeah. is my ice shower. It's like, once you do that thing, everything else just kind of falls in place because you've knocked out that first trigger. And it's like, okay, we're in this, we're controlling this day. We're happening to life. Life isn't just going to happen to us. And so I, I love that, that, that you're on that, man. I'm a, I'm a big believer in conquering the morning that you're going to set yourself up to conquer the day well listen i know you got to get out of here you've got a jam-packed schedule i could keep you for three freaking hours brother because there's so many things i'd love to to discuss but with that eric champ dude thank you so much for coming on but now i want you to tell this is yours tell everybody where to find you uh it, it, promote promote you know your you know champ fit city whatever you want to do tell <laughs> people how to get a hold of you because i know you can do great things for them I appreciate it. Well, if anyone's listening, you can find me. If you're on Instagram, that's that's the easiest way. Just look for Champ City, ATX. That's that's the Instagram. And um, believe it or not, I, I check I, probably ninety percent of all my direct messages. And if you have a question too, I respond to most of them, and I get quite a bit of them. Uh, so if you have a if you find me, if you got a question about health and wellness, 
that's where you can find me. And if you ever want to learn anything about the coaching program, ask a question through there, and I'm glad to get you uh, squared away. That's All it. right, brother. <laughs> Eric, thank you so much, man. And congratulations now on being not only a father, an entrepreneur, but now you're a Texas Titan, brother. I really appreciate this time. <laughs> it's an honor to be on here, Jason. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to the Vitru Vitruvian. There you, on that next one. there you go. Appreciate <laughs> it, brother. Thanks, Jason. Hey, man.